Hey guys, Steve here from Borsprung Suspension in Whistler. Welcome to the Tuesday Tune. This is a short video series uh, where we talk tech about suspension, anything and everything, all brands, all models, uh, and discuss things that aren't commonly discussed elsewhere uh, in order to just put some interesting information out there. This week, we're going to look at the evolution of Fox's float air springs. So this is current generation Fox 36. This is current generation uh, Fox 40 float. This is uh, Remy's fork that just came back from Rampage. Uh, we have some of the previous generation stuff here as well. So we're going to run you through uh, the way that the float air springs are designed and how they've changed over time, what's improved, and uh, yeah, just put it out there. So you guys have got something interesting. So we're going to start that. with what are the earlier generations of float air spring. So this is the spring plunger of uh, the, this is actually second generation float. So the difference, the main difference between this and the very first generation is there's two of these U-cup seals here that you can see. Uh, the reason for that was, and anyone who's owned the first generation float air springs uh, will attest to this, these U-cups are a very good one-way seal. They're very good at sealing pressure that's pushing down the air pressure. They're not so good at scraping the oil off the inside of the stanchion. And so what would happen when there was only the one U-cup is that oil would essentially get up into the air chamber that wasn't supposed to be there from the lowers. So it'd have two negative effects. First of all, it would fill your air chamber up with oil. Uh, and particularly when people would only service the lowers of their fork, uh, this created issues because it would mean that the lubrication oil in the lowers was now in the air spring. Uh, it would also mean that it was the equivalent of putting volume reducers in your uh, air spring. But as the level of oil got higher and higher above the piston, it got harder and harder to use full travel, and eventually the, the fork would bottom on essentially like close to hydraulic lock, really. So, they added the second new cup here, which is just a, a scraper seal. If you can see that well on the camera there. And, uh, so the idea of that is that it just basically scrapes the oil off the inside of the stanchion, prevents it getting up there. That was a big improvement. Um, what you can see here as well, this is the coil negative spring. So when the fork tops out, it will essentially try and get it there, hit like that. And so the air, air pressure here compresses it like that. And so the negative spring is actually trying to compress the fork. So what you can see, there's two springs, one inside the other. This smaller one on the inside is just a top out spring. So that's made to make it very stiff and prevent it overshooting. This one here is quite soft uh, and that dictates the stiffness of the initial travel. Um, the limitation of this style of air spring really was that these only ever came with one variant of coil negative spring as in there's only one spring rate, you couldn't change it. So if you're particularly light, particularly soft, then that would mean that you couldn't really have it set up ideally for yourself. Later generations uh, in the Float 40 uh, were apparently going to have exchangeable, uh, exchangeable negative springs, but that never really eventuated on the market. Uh, there are only a few of them ever made as far as I can tell. Single rate negative spring wasn't such a big deal uh, for shorter travel forks. When we're talking 100, 120 mil travel forks, it worked fine. 80 mil, completely fine. Um, once we got up to 160, this is, is out of 36, uh, 160 mil, 36. Once we got up to you know 150, 160, 200 mil travel forks, then it became more of a big deal because the pressure differences meant that uh, lighter riders weren't able to get the fork to fully extend. Heavier riders weren't able to run the pressure that they wanted. Um, without it essentially topping out. So, that being first slash second gen, uh, Fox led and moved on to this variant here. So this variant here has uh, a similar sort of setup. It has one top out spring there, and it has, this is a top out bumper, this red thing here, piston with two U-cups that are facing opposite ways. And then it has also this much longer negative spring. And so that meant it could be active over much more So the current generation of float air springs are, as I said before, fully air sprung. That means air positive, air negative. Uh, the advantage of that, really, the biggest single advantage of that is that the air negative chamber means it's always, the spring rate of the negative spring is always in direct proportion to the positives as compared to the coil negatives which are always a fixed rate 
So those work with a certain range of pressures, whereas the air negative ones, in theory, work at any pressure. <coughs> so this one here, 36, the NA float air spring. So this is comprised of two parts. We have the spring plunger here. So this has your air piston, uh, seal head, top out bumper. And we have the top cap as well, that has your air valve, and uh, this is the transfer shaft. If you have a look, good look in there, you can see that little dimple. Don't know how good the camera is at focusing on everything at once. So, this is a really cool system in that it lets you easily adjust the travel. So you can insert uh, spaces in here, um, basically between this and this and that will reduce your travel and you can also at the same time adjust where the transfer port is for that particular travel setting by popping out a little screw up here and uh, simply shifting that up. So it's a really cool system in that they only have to make like, there's only one part number um, that they have to make for you know a given size of fork there and it's fully self equalizing, it doesn't require machining or uh, punching the stanchion. Uh, from a design point of view, that's pretty good. Uh, it also means, well, it, well, also means it gives us the opportunity to insert volume spaces like this thing here. The disadvantage of this system, uh, compared to the old flow system, this now has one, two, and well, three moving seals. So it was kind of interesting. This was released at about the same time as the current Talus system. When they released the current Talus Talus system. One of the selling points was that it went from having three dynamic seals to one dynamic seal. Meanwhile, the flow system went from having one dynamic seal to three dynamic seals. So that was the first generation of the fully s run flow systems. Um, they worked well. You know, unsurprisingly, Fox did a very good job of making sure friction in that was low. Um, very few people have complaints about these. So despite the additional moving seals, I think they were still a step up overall. The next generation, this comes out of a 40. So this is top cap, this is Remy's fork, hence the 50 million spaces. It's actually five, I exaggerate very slightly. This is uh, the, a similar sort of iteration um, to like a pike solo air spring. So this equalizes between the positive and negative chambers through a dimple and a stanchion. That dimple is pressed in on the inside, which must be really good fun to manufacture because it would, of course, mean that you either have to machine it, which means deburring it afterwards, uh, or even more fun, you would have to uh, press it, and that would mean an extension in two operations instead of one on the lathe. Anyway, this whole top cap here is actually part of the negative air spring, so you can see this holes in the bottom of that. So this area here, between the seal and the seal head here, uh, is part of the negative air chamber and so is this whole volume of this gold cap. And the reason that Fox can do this uh, in this particular fork is because with 40 you have these really long way apart. So the fact that this protrudes into the positive chamber actually works well, uh, not against it. So this has a very, very large negative air spring chamber. And that means that it is particularly linear um, and runs, it needs to run like higher volume in the uh, positive chamber and it means that you run at relatively high pressures uh, compared to something that would run a smaller negative chamber. The system of, uh, you know, it's very similar to RockShox's bottomless token system here. Uh, these spaces are clipped together, pretty neat. Everything works, you know, simply and easily. Uh, in my opinion, this is probably the best uh, fork air spring currently out there. Simply because it is the closest thing to replicating a coil, but with the advantage, um, the air advantage of being able to adjust your end so separately. So from that we can see um, the way that Fox have developed their air springs over time. I think it's pretty cool seeing it go from something so simple as just, you know, a really basic coil negative spring um, and obviously
obviously we haven't touched on the travel justice systems here. The travel justice systems went from sticky and a bit crappy to you know, various iterations of pretty much the same thing um, until the current generation, which is much smoother and funnily enough is literally exactly the same as the old uh, float air springs. It has a coil negative spring, uh, but the whole the whole assembly just shifts up and down in the floor. So in that regard, one moving seal instead of three, that's great. Um, the hydraulic travel adjust system is prone to sucking air into the oil over time, uh, needing to be re-bled. But other than that, they're being reliable and simple and they feel pretty good. Anyway guys, I hope you uh, learned something interesting there. Uh, feel free to leave comments. We're always interested to hear what you have to say.